Apple presents events at the Apple Store. Let's take a look at the trailer for Disney's Animated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this evening's guest moderator from Popular Science, Corinne Iozio, and tonight's guests, David Bosert and Theodore Gray. All right. So here we are. It's really, really great to be here. This is, I've done, you know, I've moderated these Meet the Developers before, but this one particularly kind of made my little, like, five-year-old Corinne sing and dance, so I'm very excited to talk to you guys about this app. Um, serious Disney nerd never quite grew out of it. Uh, so I think the best place to start is for you guys, Bob and Teo, to kind of give us a little bit of a snapshot of how these two companies came together, because Disney is obviously a giant storied company with a robust 90-year history, and Touch Press, by comparison, is very new. So how do the two things come together? Maybe I can start that and no, you can... So uh, this all came about from... Um, a plane ride, as a senior executive at Disney apparently got on a plane in New York with, for some reason, a copy of Touch Press's um, Wasteland, the T.S. Eliot poem app, and got off the plane in Los Angeles thinking, you know, we ought to do something with these people, whoever they are. Um, and something like a year later, it started getting serious, and um, that's when they went to Dave, I guess, for the next step. Yeah, I mean, essentially, uh the, it bubbled up about uh, uh, a little over two years ago, uh, and uh, it, it was just you know a germ of an idea. They wanted to do something about Disney animation uh, in a very robust way in an iPad app, and uh, it kind of got dropped in my lap uh, probably 18 months ago, and uh, we spent close to a year putting the material together that went into the app. So, and you guys obviously have a ton of material to draw from, uh, 53 animated movies. What sort of catalog were you dealing with? I mean, we, you know, at, at, the Walt, at Walt Disney Animation, we, we have about 70 million pieces of artwork that are uh, uh, in our animation research library. So, uh, I mean, we had an enormous amount of stuff to choose from, and we really wanted to pick some, some uh, artwork that, and, and some animation clips uh, that people hadn't seen before or hadn't seen in the way we were going to present them. Yeah, I was going to say, they, they have this incredible animation research library. It's this big building. It's kind of like a Fort Knox of Disney art from, you know, from, I suppose it goes back to 1937 or even earlier. 19, it actually goes back into like 1926, 27. Yeah, and they guard this stuff as closely as anything we've ever worked with. One of the things we do, if any of you have seen my Elements app, we have these sort of rotating objects, which we do with a turntable. And that was like a major security operation to uh, be allowed to go into those archives and set up our equipment and actually take one of the, um, the animation maquettes, or actually about 60 of the animation maquettes that they have, pick them up and set them on this piece of apparatus that we brought. A lot of negotiating, a lot of um, 
you know, making sure that we were really not going to break it somewhere along. And we didn't break any of them. Uh, and that's, I think that's one of, the, one of the neat little things in the app is that here are these things which, you know, not even Dave is allowed to, to you know, actually touch these things. Well, I, I mean, I do have a little access to it, but the fact of the matter is, is there was a lot of these pieces that really the public wouldn't uh, normally ever get access to or be able to see. So we were able to pick some pieces that are so rare that are kind of under lock and key, and be able to to you know work with with, with Teo and the folks from Touch Press and really be able to uh, uh, put it in a format that allowed people to to be able to spin it and look at it, um, and, and and it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's like if you have the app, you, you just touch it with your finger. It's like you have it in your hand and you spin it. And it's a very, it's, if you haven't tried it, it's, it's worth um, just experiencing how connected you feel to an object when you've got this photography of it that you can just kind of spin. So I've obviously had some time to spend with the app, but everybody here might not have. So the animation maquettes is part of a process, and obviously a lot of the app is about building out that process. Um, so specifically, what are the maquettes? What were they used for? And how does that play into everything? Yeah, I, I mean, typically when we make an animated film, when, when they're designing the characters, at some point they get to a place where the, the, um, the characters bought off on by the directors, the filmmakers, and uh, they'll typically take the characters and they'll do a sculpt, a three-dimensional sculpt out of it. Nowadays, they typically do those as a, a computer model. Uh, but uh, years ago, they would actually create a dimensional sculpture and typically would, would replicate those by making a mold and doing castings. And those uh, maquettes would actually be given out to the animators that were working on the movie. And they would, if they were working on Ursula from The Little Mermaid, they'd have a little three-dimensional statue of Ursula sitting at their desk that they'd be able to reference as part of the, uh, creating the animation and drawing. That brings us into, again, one of the primary things that I think is so compelling about the app is that it's not only a history of all these characters, but it's also a history of the evolution, of the technology that you use. Can you talk about that a little? It is. A, it, it definitely, the app uh, uh, is all about how Walt Disney Animation is making the movies that we make today. Uh, movies like Frozen and Wreck-It Ralph and Tangled. Uh, it's, it's really an overview of that uh, process uh, of making those films. And it also talks uh, about how we made films in the past. So how things were done uh, on Snow White with the multiplane camera uh, and how camera technology has evolved uh, over the years. And, and how we're doing camera capture and, and some digital technology today. Yeah, I think that's, as, as somebody who kind of came to this and learned all of this history in, in the process of making the app, it's, it, you sort of, you can't understand the present without understanding the past and knowing where it came from. And it's absolutely amazing to learn how some of these things were done, you know, 60, 70 years ago, you know, where today it might just be a, you know, simple thing with a computer and you realize they had to build giant machine tools and you know have people paint it's just it was an incredible process that it that you know when you understand that it kind of enlightens you as to how remarkable what's being done today is so why teo do you feel like a platform like ios and a platform like the ipad is the right way to be showing off that story well so it's kind of intimidating to write a book about Disney animation, because there are literally thousands of books written about Disney animation. It's like, what, what could we possibly add to this history of you know, books written by people who were there, people who you know, study it for a living? But if you think about it, these thousands of books about Disney animation have one basic problem. You touch the pictures and they don't move. I mean, this, the medium, the subject matter of animation is, it's all about pictures that move. And in the print books, they don't move. And you know, I think this must be deeply frustrating to anybody writing that sort of a book. And you see things where you know, there'll be a, a great and wonderful classic work about animation where there's five frames of a pencil sketch, one next to each other on the page. And you're supposed to kind of imagine what that would look like moving. Um, so it just, just immediately upon being presented with the idea of an interactive iPad apps, you know, about the subject of animation, 
that makes a lot of sense. We can make the pictures move when you touch them, and they can talk and sing and dance and, and everything. Yeah, and just to, to follow up on that, uh, w one of the sort of seminal books on animation is called uh, uh, The Illusion of Life, and it was written by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson, two of the nine old men, one, two of the really great animators from, uh, from the golden age of, of Disney animation. And uh, uh, they... Uh, had tremendous amount of stuff in the book, but none of it moved, which is what they were in the business of doing. And we were able to actually take the 12 principles of animation, which, which they first wrote down in, in about 1980, and uh, the, uh, uh, the family members allowed us to uh, use that in the iPad app, and all the illustrations from the book are actually now moving. They're all movable clips. You can tap on them and play them, uh, which is something that you didn't have the ability to do, obviously, with the book. And obviously having access to that library was sort of the story of the animating of each of these movies. You're able to add in more layers of information. Like, you can see the same scene in multiple different ways. A absolutely. You can look at, uh, for instance, uh, in, in the uh, commercial or the sizzle piece they just showed, uh, you can scroll through a clip from The Lion King where you can see the, the rough storyboard pencil test animation to the cleaned up animation to the color. And you can play the clip and swipe between those as you're going through it. And it just it really showcases the whole process. Yeah, I think that particular feature and that particular Lion King clip was um, was kind of instrumental in getting the ball rolling in this project because we, you know, we got that raw material from Dave of that particular clip in uh, three different stages from the storyboard panels. I think it was it. Is yeah, it, it, it started out with the storyboard, yeah, and, then, and then, uh, rough rough then the rough animation, and then the cleanup animation, and then the yeah, color. So I guess four level, levels, and we just kind of just kind of just threw together a little prototype and thought, well, what could we do with this? Let's you know, make it so you can swipe it like a video, then kind of flip through it. I was thinking, you know, let's let people experience this kind of a little bit more the way that animators think about it, rather than this is a finished piece of video and we're going to watch it, rather this is a set of frames that we're going to study by flipping through it. And they might have in the old days done it with their fingers and, you know, manipulating sheets of paper or with a, a film thing where you can crank it forwards and backwards. But it's kind of, it's frames that you study their relationship between them. And then I thought, well, you know, we can do a little better than that. We can actually let you go through time this way, and then this way we can let you go through the stages of production so you can, so you can see how the, uh, the artwork becomes more and more refined as it's copied over and colored in. Uh, and that turned out to be really cool and really compelling and a good demonstration of why this project kind of made sense, because nobody had seen that before and been able to experience the integration of those different stages of animation in one place. So this is, I don't know the exact count, but there's probably a dozen touch press apps before this one. Um, so as you go and you continue to develop, what are th some things that, some problems that you had to solve this time around that weren't, that were very unique to the project? Well, this was an extremely ambitious app. Um, I mean, we, we tried to do a lot of different things with, let's just say, an intimidating partner. Uh, you know, Disney is a very big company, and um, we, you know, we, ha we had to try to figure out, like, how do, you, how do you work with these people? Fortunately, we had Dave, who um, was a, an excellent interface and got us all kinds of wonderful raw materials. But we had to think, like, which we always do, is we like, like what, what should one do, given that you no longer have the constraints uh, that applied previously when trying to talk about um, the subject matter and, and that you know the previous constraints might have been you're doing this on paper or it might have been you're doing a video you know you're doing a DVD extra about it or you're doing a, uh, a two-hour documentary or something like that now you're doing something different what should you do what like it's an open-ended question and you know there's, it, it, we had to sort of figure out what are the things that are lacking in the other forms of media um, and what are the capabilities of the device? And then, you know, to some extent, what can we get away with? Um, and I think the, if you notice the, the, the animated, the bouncing text, which we can maybe show a little later, um, you know, that's something where, had that been any other product uh, that we were working on, I would have said, no way, that's a gimmick. We don't do gimmicks, we do real features. You know, this doesn't add anything to the product, this is just stupid. But 
it's a book about animation. And so the text in the app is a particle system. It's a physics-based particle system that is an example of one of the very common technique used in animation. And it's fun, and you can play with it. And it's actually meaningful because of the context that it's in. You know, I was, I was going to follow on that and just say that when you tap on an image and it enlarges, the text shifts around. So you still have the text there, but you now have a larger image. It might have a caption to it. Uh, it might be a clip that's playable. If you double tap it, it can take over the entire page. Um, and one of the things that I find really fascinating is, you know, you have all these principles of animation that are baked into the code of the app. But within the app, there's almost, I guess, the best analogy for them would be mini games. Um, and within some of that, there is a lot of the really robust sort of computer animated technology that the animators are actually working with. Uh, yeah, there's a couple examples. Of that. I think the frozen snow is, um, is my favorite example of a, uh, the sort of little mini, mini game thing. I mean, it's not just a book. It's got a bunch of real, you know, fairly deep interaction uh, interactives in it. And that's, um, so there's this princess who unfortunately is the, the kind of evil princess, but she's really good, I don't know. Anyway, she seems evil for a while. Um, and uh, she kind of throws out this magical snow. And that, you know, I had some conversations with the special effects people about how that was done. You know, what is the algorithm that's used? How is that, of course, it's, you know, it's a piece of computer code that creates that effect in the movie. And there's you know, millions of little particles of snow that are being simulated and they're flowing around. and. Uh, it's completely impossible to do that. You can't even do that in real time on a giant server farm. They're taught, you know, they render for minutes each frame. But it turns out that if you kind of think about it, um, we were able to come up with sort of an, what I would refer to as an authentic replica of the underlying algorithm that actually mimics the dynamics of it. It's only about 100,000 particles instead of many millions. Um, but it works in real time at 60 frames a second on the iPad. And it lets you, you kind of art direct the effect in much the same way that they do in the movie where they would kind of have an artist or, a, or a, a dancer of some sort you know move in a motion capture room move out a path and then the computer code would make the snow follow that path and you do exactly the same thing in the iPad app you trace it with your finger and then the snow follows um, and it's really cool it's kind of like a you know it's sort of a behind the scenes thing that you can actually get your fingers on and it, it's a time suck because once you start doing it, you can't stop it. It's just so much fun to do, you know, to play with it. Yeah, I've started drawing my initials and all kinds of things. Do you, do you know the secret feature? The secret feature. Yeah. So, have uh, we told have we told anybody that? You know something? I think it's one of those things that's been seeping out. It's kind of an Easter egg. Kind of. Yeah. We should probably show people. I was going to say that's as good a transition as any into uh, a little bit of demo time. So, so here's the app. It's kind of the, the top half is sort of the more book-like aspect of it, and the bottom half is the more app-like, sort of interactive half. Um, these are the chapters. It, it sort of starts with the, the history of the Disney company, um, and then it gets right into how movies are made, the stages of production, you know, visual development, characters, layouts, animation visual effects. This is sort of the, roughly speaking, the order in which you go about making a movie. Um, so we pick a chapter. Uh, this one's about characters. And so it looks like it's a book, you know, it's a book. But if I touch Dumbo, I like this clip because it's just like... Uh, I mean, right there, you know, you, you know everything you need to know about the personality of these characters in a way that you just can't communicate that with, with a couple of still images. Uh, and, and here it's just, boom, there you go. The, just a few seconds of clip. Um, so, you know, like on this page, every single one of these if you touch it, it puffs out, it moves, it walks, it talks, it does something. You know, and I was going to add to this, uh, the text that's throughout uh, all of these chapters, uh, there, there's 
you know, if you go in the story chapter, there's Walt Disney talking about uh, what how they do story uh, from 50 years ago, and then there's quotes from John Lasseter on how we're doing story today. So, you know, again, it's it's all about how we're making our movies at the Walt Disney Animation Studios today, and it's pl it's really paying homage to you know all of the giants that went before us uh you know who created snow white and cinderella and sleeping beauty it's gonna find one of the maquettes so we can show there we go so there's um ursula ursula um so that's what it looks like and that's what you can do to it and you really have to do it yourself it's like you you just have to you have to have it under your own control to to feel what it's like. Do, do you have the Pinocchio one? The Pinocchio on the cat? That one's you? my favorite, too. Yeah, because I, I, it's a really great story. While, while Teo's looking for that, I'll tell you this really terrific story. And this, is again, is, is something that people don't really have access to. But um, about 10 years ago, there was a steel cabinet in the basement of the Walt Disney Animation Studios building. And that cabinet had some conduit around it. You couldn't open the cabinet. Uh, and it had been like that for about 50 years. And uh, they finally ripped out all this conduit. They opened up this cabinet. And in there was this marionette of Pinocchio that had been put, put in there when they finished the film back in 1940 or so. And it's a one-of-a-kind uh, Pinocchio marionette. And it was built, it was made back when they were making the film uh, for the animators to use as reference uh, on animating Pinocchio. And so there was a, a little bit of uh, tender, loving care put into doing a little restoration on it. But this now sits in our animation research library. And we were able to photograph it so that uh, people can look at it and, and actually appreciate it and enjoy it. Now, you can zoom in a little bit, too, on it, too. But it's just a, a fun little backstory on this, this one. It's only one that we have. And it's under lock and key in a new cabinet that doesn't have any conduit in front of it, so. <laughs> yeah, so we should look at the, um, the clip. So this was the, um, the layered clip they were talking about. So here we're going, um, you know, back and forth. I'm just moving my finger back and forth. And that would be the final color scene of, uh, from the movie. Uh, and the, uh, the, if, you, if you swipe down, you can go into what we refer to as the pencil animation. This is actually the pencil animation created by the artist before it's painted. And then prior to that, the first thing you're gonna see, if you scroll down further, is the first very rough test of the scene. And it's, it's kind of a, what we refer to as a pose test or a, a story sketch pose test uh, that would have been cut in very early on in the creation of Lion King. And it's fascinating to see how you know, like this bird, there's refinement at every stage. You know, obviously from, from there to there is a lot being done. But then even between these pencil sketches to the final color, you know, it's, it's not always lining up because they were kind of tweaking it and adjusting it as they went. So there's a bunch of different clips like this. Some of them are 3D uh, ones like here. So instead of being, uh, you know, layers relevant to doing this by hand, there are layers relevant to the, the stages of rendering in a, in a 3D computer animated movie where they're adding lighting effects and et cetera. Okay, so... Show um, them the snow. Jump the to snow. the snow. Just uh, jump to it. All right, we can just jump to the snow. The snow is so much fun. Okay, so here you have blank field and you uh, just move your finger. It just captures whatever you do. And there you go, that snow follows. Um, make a little wiggle you can uh, write your name in the snow as it were um, uh, just whatever you do and uh, because this is meant to be you know not just kind of fun it's actually meant to explain how things work you can turn on um, various layers of explanation there's text that you can read that explains what these things mean that are kind of showing you how the algorithm works uh, how these particles are kind of coerced into doing what you want them to do and uh, so the, the, the secret thing is um, if you give it a good shake, I don't know if I can do this one-handed. Um, there you go. So we, we call this snow everywhere. Um, 
Uh, and it's, it also follows your finger, so whatever you do, um, it'll start sucking in a field of snow. I like to do this, because it's trippy. And then if you shake again, it'll uh, go back to normal. Is so that the only secret thing? I think that's, yeah. It's that's the main one, that, yeah. That's the it's real the Easter one. egg that's in there right now. Yep. OK, well, let's see. Do we show everything we need to? You got me out of sequence here. Um, might as well look at the, um, the color map. Oh, uh, you want to we'll, save we'll, that, huh? Yeah, we'll save that. But so let's just look at some of the other interactives. So, so this is. Um, Maximus from Tangled, yeah. and you know it's a 3D model it's from the movie. It's the actual kind of 3D model that used in the movie, um, and this is a, what we call a mood shifter. So you can kind of drag this around, and any of these poses you can look at them from any angle. You can also go um, outside the range of where you're supposed to be able to go. So if you kind of pull this control outside the circle. This is now pushing things beyond where they ought to be, which they'll do sometimes on purpose kind of to exaggerate right before a movement starts or something like that. Some of these, they kind of, they go too far. And it's kind of on purpose. You see it's breaking up here, which I think is nice to show people that, that like this is all kind of made up, actually. This horse doesn't actually exist, and the skin doesn't really exist. And it's all it's computer models and computer algorithms and animators very carefully kind of pushing things back to where they belong that maintains this incredible illusion that these things actually exist and are, in fact, walking around. And you know, all of that is just numbers in a computer that, you know, that, that, that has, have been masterfully orchestrated to make you believe that there's something actually there. Uh, and so yeah, you can play with that yourself. This is the Vanellope. Uh, and this is meant to be sort of a super simplified uh, version of an animation program. Uh, the point of it is not so much to make your own animations, although you can do that. It's to show you how it's done. So you have controls that let you move uh, all the different joints around and rotate them. And you can create keyframes, uh, which if you then slide here, it, it animates between the keyframes. So there's a little default animation set up in here. And this is actually Vanellope that was used in Wreck-It Ralph. We actually simplified her down a little bit for this, but it's, it's the actual model from the film that we took. And, uh, and what's neat about this is that, as Teo was pointing out, you can go through and keyframe and create your own piece of animation. I'm actually waiting for somebody to submit one of those as part of a uh, seeking a job at Disney. So. Could they make her break dance? You know, the other thing we you, did, you we can, got that, actually. Uh, Teo, you, that. You, you ought to show them uh, when you create a piece of animation that you can share that. Oh, right, yeah. So, uh, which is really kind of neat. If they've set up, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm kind of surprised, actually, that, that, that this was sort of considered okay. But if you, you could make any animation you want, and then you can share it, uh, you know, post it on YouTube. Facebook, it'll, you can turn it into a, a quick time movie clip and email that to somebody. Uh, and people are doing that. If you look on YouTube and search uh, Disney Animated, you'll find like dozens and dozens uh, of really quite nice animations that people have done using this tool. OK, so let's look at the, uh, the timeline. So this is kind of like a, people say this is an in-depth app. And uh, here's what we mean by in-depth. Uh, so this is the timeline, and uh, we scroll this all the way out. So here you're looking at the complete history of the Walt Disney Animation Studios. So this is every full-length animated feature film made by Walt Disney Animation Studios, which is a very specific definition that leads you to, I think it's currently 53 films. So 53, um, which includes Frozen. It goes from, from Snow White, 1937, all the way to this year's Frozen. Yeah, so you see the whole list. You can zoom in, and let's go, let's say, zoom into The Lion King. So here you can see all the, the neighboring movies. Touch Lion King. Now you've got kind of a card, a page about Lion King. And you can read the synopsis and everything. Um, and here you've got the characters. Now, you know, these are not just static pictures of the characters. That would not be fulfilling the potential of the medium. When the world turns its back on you, you turn your back on the world. So again, you know, even if you haven't seen the film, you just know exactly what kind of guy that that, what is that, a meerkat or something? Yes, that um, is a meerkat, Timon the meerkat. 
So uh, you just like you you know everything you need to know about that character just from that little snippet. Um, and then uh, we've got here the the uh, classic songs um, in iTunes preview because these are like Elton John songs and you can't really just put Elton John songs in your app. Uh, but we can put the uh, the previews and if you want to get them, you can get them on iTunes. And then we have this little bar of color along the bottom. Uh, so this is called a color map, color bar, and it shows the progression throughout the whole movie of the dominant colors in each scene. So if there's like a lot of blue sky, you'll see uh, kind of here in the beginning of it, you'll see a lot of blue there because it's kind of happy and there's lots of blue sky and green grass and everything. Um, and then, you know, the colors change. And if you want to see what's going on, you can touch this anywhere. And I'm sort of moving my finger across it and you see these little thumbnails. Uh, that show you what's going on. So you basically have the complete movie in thumbnail form. Like here towards the end, you see all that red. Well, what's going on there? So, so that's fire. And it's like, things are really bad. The whole place is burning down and there's battles and it's dangerous and it's just really red. And then it gets even worse because it starts raining and it's dark and it's miserable. And, um, and then boom, the sun comes up, happy, 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 and we're into the credits. Uh, and you can actually see from the width of that little patch of blue just how little happy ending there is. Um, uh, but, you know, that's all it takes because everything is good now and, you know. So we got these color bars. We got them for every movie. Every one of those 53 movies has a color bar like that. And you can put them all up together. So, I, I, you know, and the one thing I have to say, this, this is all, you know, Teo, and this was genius. This is all... This is actually 52 movies because we haven't put Frozen in yet. Frozen's going to go in in an update, I believe, later in 2014. But you got 52 feature films here. There's over 26,000 embedded images on this one page, which is just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, because you can go through. This is like everything they've made from 1937 on down. Um, you can flip through it. And, you know, it's just a thumbnail and there's no sound. But basically, this is the overview. and uh, This is like... If this isn't comprehensive enough for you, I don't know what is. Um, and it also kind of magnifies like that. Uh, when you touch it. So, okay, there you go. So, um, I've had a chance to ask a bunch of questions. You guys have kind of had the 50 cent tour of everything that's going on, so we want to open it up for your questions. Hi. Um, more on the development side of the app, you said it took 18 months to put together, which seems well, very quick for such a huge app. What did your team look like size-wise? I mean, it was a massive army. It was. It was. <laughs> uh, a massive army that didn't sleep a lot. Um, it was actually, I mean, in terms of, you know, real hardcore work, like there's a team that's working on this, it was actually more like 10 months, 10 or 11 months. Um, there was then, you know, that was preceded by um, a year and a half or so of talking about, oh, we ought to do something, and then, well, maybe we could do this, and then finally it's like, okay, this is what we're going to do, and, you know, there was 15 plus people on the Touch Press side, and I think at some point a comparable number on the Disney side. Yeah. Um, you know, and, we, and we did, I mean, we, we did spend quite a number of months actually blocking out what the text was, what, you know, what, what, we, what this was going to be. I mean, I kind of look at this app, it's a coffee table app. That's what I call it, because it is so robust and has so much material in it. And each one of the chapters that we did is kind of, you can read this in a linear fashion like a book, or you can hop around and just sort of go into a module uh, uh, and read about about that one particular discipline. But, you know, altogether, there, it was probably close to a year of, uh, of writing and putting all the material together that went in this. And the only thing that we were limited by is uh, how big the app could be and the devices themselves, right? So maybe 10 years from now, that there won't be a limitation and we'll be able to have like, you know, a, a, a 10 gig app, you know, but we were limited to what, two gigs, I think. Two gigs. Yeah. I, th I think it's actually closer to one and a half, but people grumble at the size of apps when they get that big. But, you know, you, you know, you, you get what you download, as it were. And there's really, you know, it's, it's like those are not wasted bites. There's a lot of really good stuff crammed in here. Yeah, another question for Teo. Uh, 
the gap between, on the one hand, the incredible expression, expressions of, of an artist, pencil on paper, and on the other side, the, uh, the simulating people, the, the skinning and uh, Newton's laws and uh, computation fluid dynamics. I wonder if the production of the book gave you any insight into that, uh, into the nature of that gap. Well, I think both disciplines, you know, hand-drawn animation and computer animation are, um, you know, they're difficult and they're amazing when they're done well. You know, both can be done badly also, um, but, I, you know, I, w I wouldn't say that one is sort of more artistic than another. They have their strengths and weaknesses, and, you know, there's a, there's a tendency among certain uh, animation studios to over rely on the computer and simulations and such. Disney doesn't really have that problem. Uh, I mean, they, you know, the way they make 3D CG animated movies is it's so handmade. Um, you know, they're, like they're, they have hundreds of little controls and they're moving everything a little bit at a time, even though you could, in principle, just say, oh, well, that's physics. We'll just throw physics at it. But physics doesn't get you the the difference between real life and animation. It's not sort of that extra, that's more than real uh, effect that an artistically produced animation can give you. Yeah, and I, I, I'd add to that by saying that even in our contemporary films like Wreck-It Ralph or even this year's Frozen, um, there's uh, instances where we're doing some pencil animation reference of what something should, be, you know, how something should be moving, like a curtain. And that's being used uh, by the guys that are doing the cloth dynamics. So, you know, it, it's you know, as Teo said, it's not just about you know running a simulation and saying that's it. It's it's almost keyframing the simulation in some instances. Yeah. Or or art directing it. And the frozen snow is actually kind of an example where, you know, this this snow doesn't just go where physics would like it to go. It goes where the art director would like it to go, um, and you know, and then the algorithm you know, is, is in a sense subservient to that artistic vision and the algorithm, which is itself a piece of creative work, um, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of, as, as I think as Lassiter says, technology in service to art. Um, uh, and when it's done well, it's, you know, it's amazing. It's like, this is no, you could not do by hand. Um, while at the same time, you know, I mean, the, the, not to in any way put down the hand-drawn animation because that's, it's just unbelievable what, what it's possible to do and how directly it's possible to sort of connect with human emotion through just a few pencil lines. The, the fact that you can have, you know, even without color, even without sound, even without anything, a few just, just lines on paper done right that just hit you with, a, you know, with, a, with an emotional force. That they have personality. Right, personality. But you just pencil sketches have personality. It's mind blowing that that's possible. And it wasn't at all obvious that that was possible, you know, before um, people like Disney got into the business of making these movies and really imagining that it was possible for people to cry about an animation. You know, that previously people it was just like they were gimmicks. It was slapstick. It was nothing, nothing big. Who who could care about pencil sketches? But you know, that was one of the things that was discovered is that actually people can, people will like cry, they keep killing the mothers and it, you know, it's like, it's like people get really invested in these things which when you get down to it, it's just pencil on paper. This area was obviously new for touch press as you um, described and therefore you folks learned a lot about Disney and animation. I'm curious about the interaction and the flow in the opposite direction. Has Disney thought about new ways of doing things uh, based on its um, sharing with a completely different point of view from uh, the folks at Touch Press? No, I, I absolutely. I think uh, this was a it was a great relationship between uh, actually Disney Interactive Group, uh, Walt Disney Animation Studios, and Touch Press, as well as uh, Disney Publishing, and uh, and I think that you know we all worked really well together, and there was a there was a flow uh, back and forth. Uh, we certainly learned a lot, uh, but you know I I think as far as apps go uh, the. And by the way, I don't know if, if if you guys are aware of it, but Disney Animated was was just named uh, the iPad app of the year uh, by Apple, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. 
And uh, so, yeah, I mean, did we learn? Uh, of course, I think any, any of these types of projects where, where you're blending uh, technologies, you're doing something new, you're always, you're always going to learn something. Hey, uh, I was wondering if the app is going to be updated with new Disney movies as they come out. Funny you should ask that question. Um, we just released an update on December 12th, uh, which has a lot of frozen artwork in it, as well as some new text pages that discuss uh, the design language of Frozen. Uh, yep, there we go, the design language of Frozen. There it is, uh, which is really terrific. So I, I think the plan going forward is that there's going to be periodic updates where new material is going to be added in. I think they're looking at doing another update in April or something like that potentially, uh, which will have some artwork and some sneak peeks at some upcoming films that, uh, that are being done at Walt Disney Animation Studios. All right. Well, that's going to do it for tonight. Everybody join me in thanking our panel for being here. Thank you, David. Thank you, Theo. Of course, Corinne, for moderating.